Chapter 19 Salvatore's voice was the last thing Dominic heard before falling asleep that night, and it was the first thing he heard the next morning. But this time, Salvatore was not singing. He was groaning. "'My stomach hurts!' he cried. Dominic sat up to find Salvatore doubled over in pain, clutching his belly. "'I told you not to swallow all those cherry pits yesterday,' Francesco scolded. "'Antonio, what are you doing?' he called. Antonio had knelt beside Salvatore and was trying to look up his nose. "'I think I see this tree starting to grow,' Antonio whispered. While Antonio and while Dominic and Francesco laughed, Salvatore groaned and pushed Antonio away. "Are you feeling good enough to walk?" Francesco asked, putting his arm on his brother's shoulder. "We must reach the city today." Salvatore's face was white. He bit down on his lower lip to quell the pain, but he insisted he could walk. They were still over an hour away from the harbor, and it was an easy walk going down and the well-worn path, but they had to stop several times as Salvatore was doubled over in pain. Francesco frowned. It's not good to travel with a sour stomach, he said. I can make it, I can make it, Salvatore insisted. Dominic and Francesco took turns helping him to walk. They continued down until they finally reached the cobbled streets of the city. Dominic was glad to be off the stony hillside. He was not used to walking barefoot, and his tender feet were now quite bruised. Suddenly, the little group found themselves walking into a fantasia of color, voices, and music. Vide Napoli e poi mori. See Naples, and then die, Francesca whispered. What are you talking about? Anton Dominic asked nervously. It's an old saying, Francesco explained. They say you haven't lived until you've seen this city. I just hope I can find a way to stay alive in this city, Dominic thought. He stared at the women in long skirts and the men in cloth caps as they swarmed along the side streets that climbed toward the higher quarters of the city. Fountains gurgled, a baby cried, and a young girl hung over a balcony, singing to the passers-by below. All the activity reminded him of the hustle and bustle of his streets back home in Brooklyn but the look and smell of this place were quite different. Great domed buildings with ornate stone carvings rose up but above the terracotta-colored roofs. The strong scent of ripe hay and manure was thick in the sea air, along with the pungent aroma of seaweed and fish. Shifty-eyed con men stood on street corners hawking their goods to wary immigrants about to embark. Teeth pulled! one shouted, grabbing hold of Dominic's arm. Don't make the voyage with a mouthful of rotten teeth. Dominic squirmed his way out of the man's grip and broke into a run to catch up with Francesco and the others. Authentic American shirts, wailed another after them. Don't arrive in America looking like a greenhorn. Relics of the saints to calm an angry ocean, promised another. Hair from the head of St. Christopher guaranteed to secure a safe journey. We have no money, Francesco told them, only our tickets. Why did you tell them that? Dominic whispered frantically to Francesco. You never tell someone on the streets what you've got on you. But Francesco didn't seem to understand, and Dominic soon realized that coming from a little mountain village, Francesco was not as street smart as a person coming from a place like Brooklyn. Dominic felt something brush against his sleeve, and he turned to see a grimy-faced boy, younger than himself, trying to pick his pocket. He pushed him away. Then another smaller boy slipped his hand into Francesco's backpack. Hey! Francesco yelled. Stop! He's stolen our shoes!